Today we're gonna to talk about aspirin and two things I wanna mention about aspirin. Aspirin is 81 milligrams of aspirin. Aspirin is not ibuprofen, that's a totally different medication. So I just went golfing this morning and sometimes people are like, oh, I'm gonna take some ibuprofen because I'm sore, I went golfing, I did whatever. Aspirin is totally different than ibuprofen, so make sure that you understand they are two different things. Today we're talking about 81 milligrams of aspirin, also called low-dose aspirin. The other thing that I wanna mention here too, before we really get started, I'm sure everybody has a friend or knows someone who had preeclampsia during pregnancy. I remember having a friend who had twins in pregnancy and their doctor never told them to take their 81 milligrams of aspirin, also called low-dose aspirin, and they developed preeclampsia in the postpartum period. So this discussion today about aspirin is very important. We're really gonna focus on how it helps to prevent preeclampsia in certain populations. So today, let's start talking about aspirin. Welcome to the Dr. Lexi Show, where I take pregnancy topics, break them down as simply as I can to help you advocate for yourself and your pregnancy. I'm Dr. Lexi, a board-certified OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist, which just means a high-risk pregnancy doctor, and today we're talking about aspirin. All right, so with regard to aspirin, I want you to know that I have a download, and I will pause here for you to download it, and it's at drlexihill.com backslash aspirin. So go ahead. Okay, if you have your form downloaded, it looks about like this. Am I a candidate for low dose aspirin during pregnancy? This is gonna be some bread and butter of what we're gonna talk about today. So with regard to aspirin, let's start with expanding our knowledge. All right, so let's expand our knowledge by answering some of the base questions. First thing, what is aspirin? Aspirin is an over-the-counter medication, so you do not need a prescription for it. The type we're talking about is called low dose aspirin it is 81 milligrams. And you do not have to have a brand name when you're talking about this. I just happen to have this one here to look at. So it will say low dose aspirin. And then you can also see the dosage here, 81 milligrams. This is what we're talking about. It is a type of anti-inflammatory. The reason it's important for those during pregnancy and the reason it will be utilized in certain people in pregnancy is because of that anti-inflammatory property that it has to decrease inflammation particularly in small vessels. The other thing that people kind of worry about when they take aspirin is, oh, um, someone told me it's a blood thinner. Can it thin the blood just a tad? For sure. Is it considered a blood thinner? Like something that someone takes when they have a blood clot or something to make their blood super thin? No. I will tell you though, during pregnancy, nosebleeds can actually be more common. So if you're more prone to nosebleeds and you're asked to take baby aspirin during a pregnancy, you may experience a few more little nosebleeds, especially if you live in a dry area, kind of like here in Arizona. So talk to your doctor if you have issues with that, and you can always do the aspirin every other day if the nosebleeds are kind of decreasing in frequency. You don't want nosebleeds to last for a long period of time. Make sure to chat with your doctor about that. Also, side note, nosebleeds are called epistaxis, and so if someone says, do you have any issues with that or you see it on a list somewhere, that's just nosebleeds. All right, second question here, what is preeclampsia? So to expand our knowledge, it's good to know exactly what the definitions of preeclampsia are. So general terms, preeclampsia is something that we talk about as high blood pressure during pregnancy. Then when you start to get into the medical information about it, it happens after 20 weeks typically, and it's more common to see even in the third trimester. So more around that 30 week mark and beyond. So high blood pressure during pregnancy. Then you get into definitions of how high does the blood pressure have to be. Typically top number greater than or equal to 140, bottom number greater than or equal to 90. Then you get into some of the other things that go along with it to help make the diagnosis. One of those things can be protein in the urine. Other things can be abnormal lab values. You also have things that are symptoms, headaches, blurred vision, pain in the right upper quadrant, which is where the liver sits. So there's a nice little mix of blood pressures, labs, including protein in the urine, and symptoms. And you can have a certain mix of those that help get you to the diagnosis of what we call preeclampsia. The reason preeclampsia is so important is because we know that individuals who develop preeclampsia within their pregnancy, or even in that immediate postpartum period, have risks for the rest of their life, particularly risks of heart issues down the road. So we are very, very, very concerned when people get preeclampsia and we should be looking and counseling them 
to talk to them about anything we can do to prevent it. That's why aspirin is so important. And that final question for expanding our knowledge, why is it that aspirin is so important to discuss with regard to the risks of preeclampsia? If you're a person that has high enough or enough risk factors even that place you at a substantially increased risk of getting preeclampsia, then you are a candidate then to take a baby aspirin during your pregnancy. So that's why it's so, so important that you understand and have these conversations with your provider, which brings me into our next section here, which is developing skills. All right, let's develop some skills with regard to aspirin, particularly how it helps us with prevention of preeclampsia. First big question to help you develop skills in talking to your provider, am I a candidate to take low dose aspirin? And this is the time if you have not yet, go to that download, drlexihill.com backslash aspirin, and you will be able to get your download. Within this download, what you're gonna be able to see is on the left side, you can see if you click any of these boxes, any one of these, yes, then you would be a candidate to take low dose aspirin during your pregnancy. If you click two or more of those, then yes, you're a candidate to take aspirin during your pregnancy. This is just a fun little easy way for you to do it. There are opportunities to look at risk factors online. Preeclampsia.org is a wonderful place to go, not only to do kind of a self criteria look at just like this, but also to be able to look at videos about preeclampsia and the importance of 81 milligrams of aspirin for those who have enough risk factors to then take aspirin to try to prevent getting preeclampsia during a pregnancy. Then at the bottom of this form, you have two different areas. There's an area of expanding your knowledge to go through some of the information we went through already, and then questions for your provider. And this will help you to really open that communication between you and your provider. Second question here, do I have any reason not to take aspirin? So even if you are someone who is recommended to take low dose aspirin, what if you have something in your history that says you should not take 81 milligrams of aspirin? Talk to your provider to see if you have anything in your history that says, oh, you are someone who should not take aspirin. Some examples would be people who have gastrointestinal bleeding, like if you've had an ulcer, particularly if you have an active stomach ulcer or anything like that, that's a no-no. Also, particularly if you're allergic to aspirin, that's somebody who shouldn't take it. Just talk to your provider about if you've ever taken aspirin before and make sure you don't have any contraindications, meaning you shouldn't take aspirin. And finally, for developing some skills, let's look at this last question, question number three. When should I start taking low-dose aspirin if indeed I'm a candidate? So if you are someone who is a candidate to take low-dose aspirin during a pregnancy, we do like people to initiate it by around 12 to 16 weeks of your pregnancy. So I like to tell people that's right at the end of your first trimester. So try to get it started somewhere around 12 to 16 weeks, and you're gonna take it once a day, every day with food. Don't take it on an empty stomach. All right, and finally we get to the fun part, which is impact lives. What have we learned today to help us have a positive impact on a pregnancy? Well, we wanna have a healthy pregnancy. And if we can learn and be able to communicate and understand, number one, what our risks are, and number two, if we're a candidate for taking a medication like an over-the-counter low-dose aspirin that could decrease our risk of getting something called preeclampsia, that really could cause issues with our pregnancy as well as for our health in the future, that's having a healthy pregnancy, or at least trying to have a healthy pregnancy along the way. So that's fantastic. And also having a happy pregnancy. If we're able to understand things that we can do to decrease risks that we could have in our pregnancy that could affect delivery timing, our future risks for our health, that's absolutely fantastic as well. And finally, another part of the impact, there are so many places to go to advocate for yourself and to help raise awareness for preeclampsia. Preeclampsia Awareness Time happens in May. You also may have heard a lot in the news lately of individuals, a lot of people who are famous individuals, athletes, who have been affected by preeclampsia. This is so important because in my mind, I'm always wondering, did somebody talk to them about preeclampsia? Were they taking their aspirin? Did they have enough risk factors to take aspirin? Did they even know low-dose aspirin was something they could take to prevent preeclampsia? Did they even know what preeclampsia was? Did anyone talk to them about it? 
That's why I want to do this. That is my impact I want to have. I want anybody out there who's pregnant, becoming pregnant, gone through postpartum to know what preeclampsia is and know that aspirin is something that you can take during a pregnancy if you have risks of preeclampsia. And another one of the big things that I always like to say, if you yourself had preeclampsia in a prior pregnancy or a first degree relative, so your mom or your sister had preeclampsia in a pregnancy, that right there is enough for you to take low dose aspirin in a future pregnancy. So ask your mom, ask your sister if they had any issues with high blood pressure during their pregnancies. Couple of things to recap here. First off, aspirin is something that you can take over the counter, low dose aspirin to help prevent risks of preeclampsia. Second, make sure you talk to your provider to see if you have enough risk factors or any risk factors that warrant you being someone who should take low dose aspirin during your pregnancy. And finally, if you've talked to your provider and you don't have any contraindications, meaning reasons you should not take aspirin, and you meet that criteria to take aspirin, be sure that you're trying to get it started by about 12 to 16 weeks along during your pregnancy. All right, I hope you learned some today about low-dose aspirin and preeclampsia and how that low-dose aspirin can be used to try to decrease development of preeclampsia during a pregnancy. Don't forget to check out your download for that aspirin sheet so you can look at your own criteria, drlexihill.com backslash aspirin. Check out places like preeclampsia.org, which is the preeclampsia foundation. Learn how to advocate for yourself and learn more about what you can do for awareness in your area. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Dr. Lexi wishing you a happy and healthy pregnancy. And they're tiny too. You got tiny.